tap into what they're doing, but then also to surface and showcase and measure. Um, and then on the, the demand side, we're also quite unique. So our target audience um, are 18 to 35 year olds. So they are now the largest travel demographic on the planet. They want to travel sustainably because they've told us so. And they choose hostels because they believe them to be more sustainable. But we then are left with this, you know, I guess an opportunity and a responsibility to deliver what they need to. So our first stop was GSTC. We needed help to figure out how to support the hostels on their journey. So it's about 18 months ago since I um, first chatted to Roy, and I was joking this morning. I, I remember the day because it was uh, from my COVID sick bed, and I was really grumpy, and I was really ill, and it was camera off. And I'm sure I was like, oh, I really don't want to deal with these people. But he did, to his credit. So we, we persevered. Um, and then the other thing that Roy recommended was actually speaking to peers, which, again, if anybody in the room hasn't done that, I can't recommend it highly enough. But the peer he recommended was small luxury hotels, and we'll hear from them shortly. And again, I was rolling my eyes going, hostel world, luxury hotels, I, I don't really get the connection. But it will become clear as we all present our various pieces that we're all very much on a similar journey, regardless of the differences. So um, as I said, Peggy will talk to you later. We talked to GSTC, we started on our journey with Bureau Veritas, but then we also obviously talked to our hostels um, a lot. We talked to our customers a lot. Uh, we took all of their inputs. We then went back and we surveyed the hostels again about what they told us in the first survey and really started to lean into all of the feedback we were getting from them. Um, and where we've landed is really similar to what Randy presented this morning. It's this phased notion. We want to get them all on the journey. We don't want anybody intimidated by what they think might come their way. So we have now got a framework, which I am proud of, excited about. It's just not live quite yet. It's going live in Q3, but we're already surfacing it to the hostel partners. We are getting pilot users signing up to, to start inputting and feeding back. Um, and that's kind of you know where we've gotten to on our journey. So look, I shared that because I wanted to talk about the complexities the sector presents. Um, I think that you know we're all in this unique position where despite smaller footprints, we have a huge opportunity here, huge when it comes to the environment, huge when it comes to community impact. When I think about the hostels we work with, I think in the certainly in the case of the community impact, we probably have a larger role to play than our larger counterparts because of where they're based or who they're working with. So that is my spiel. I don't have slides, I don't have a clock, so I, I think um, I should be in time. So I'm going to grab some notes because I didn't memorize the bios. I have them here and I'm going to welcome our panelists to the stage. I have a lot of questions, but I would really love if you guys submit yours too. Um, if you want to or can't put a name, because otherwise I'll be forced to choose volunteers to answer the questions. Um, and if they're generic, that's fine too. So we'll try and dip in and out. But we want it to be interactive. It's quite an intimate setting, so we want it to be conversational, interactive, and fun. Um, and I think I'm ready to invite my fellow all ladies to the stage. Uh, so first up is Peggy. Um, Peggy Amartafeo is an experienced global PR and communications professional with a record of consistent performance spanning more than 20 years. She's experienced in running successful global campaigns and devising creative and effective communications for clients. She's currently the VP of Global PR and Communications at Small Luxury Hotels of the World and also sits on their internal sustainability panel. She's responsible for developing SLH's sustainability policy Policies and curating the brand's considerate collection of actively sustainable luxury hotels. Hi, Peggy. Oh, I love it. I'm going to invite everybody up and we'll start the chat. Uh, next up is Maya Sever, who is an accomplished HR executive with 20 years of experience. She's currently head of HR and impact at the Abraham Group. The Abraham Group is aiming to receive their GSTC standard mark, so Maya is playing a vital role in adapting international standards to the Israeli context and establishing suitable mechanisms that underpin the organization's activities. She fosters a workplace culture of tolerance, egalitarianism and acceptance, embodying the values of the organization, which are come as you are, I love that, and leading with a steadfast commitment to these principles at the Abraham Group. So welcome, Maya. And last but not least, we have Aisha Zainab. So she is a true Istanbulite from the vibrant neighborhood of, the, I didn't get the pronunciation, Beyoglu? Is Beyoglu? Yeah? Beyoglu. Beyoglu. 
I didn't check that. Um, <laughs> Aisha's educational journey took her through the corridors of the Italian Middle and High School of Istanbul and then off to the charming city of Florence, lucky Aisha, where she graduated in political science from the University of Florence. While soaking up Italian culture, she started working as a stand hostess at exhibitions for Turkish companies. And after six exhilarating years in that business, she joined her family's real estate company, becoming an expat and company relocation agent. The cherry on top of her journey, in 2013, she opened the swanky number 11 hotel and her journey continues as a host who cares about the comfort of the guests and the sustainability of their stay. Welcome, Aisha. So before I sit down, quick introductions, because I love how small the world of travel is. So obviously I've worked with Peggy as we started our journey, but we our paths had kind of inadvertently crossed in a former, yeah. both in former lives. We've obviously worked with the Abraham Group since they started. Aisha is a new acquaintance, so I'm looking forward to checking out the swanky number 11. I love the word swanky. So I think we'll get started. So I have some prepared questions, and I think Peggy... You're first up, if my technology doesn't let me down. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for that intro. Just actually, just bear with me. Back okay, we'll, st we'll stick with this slide, no worries. Um, so I've had a lovely introduction, so I don't feel like I need to introduce myself anymore. But before I get started, I just want to check, has anyone been watching Succession at all? Anyone? You have? Okay, fantastic. So whether you have or not, you're probably quite familiar with this um, concept of quiet luxury that's been making the news quite a bit. Um, it's, um, it's fueled by the show's kind of love of you know, luxury labels, quiet luxury labels such as Brunello Cuccinelli and Laura Piano and the like. And everyone, it's the biggest conversation in fashion at the moment, so everyone from um, Financial Times to the Forbes has been talking about it. And by quiet luxury, we're talking about um, luxury goods and brands that exude ele elegance and quality without being flashy or, or overtly branded. Brands that use high quality materials. They have craftsmanship often heritage and sustainability at their core. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about succession, but what I did want to say, because I had a conversation with a friend of mine um, just the other week, and it suddenly dawned on me that actually small luxury hotels very much embodies the, the, the whole concept of quiet luxury. I'd go as far as to say it is the quiet luxury of luxury hotels. <laughs> Why? Because five, ooh, 500, de sorry, because our 520 strong portfolio of um, hotels in 90 countries, they really are very characterful, understated, intimate, and quality options with high standards uh, of luxury and guest well-being. So 32 years ago, when our founder conceptualized a brand that was anti-chain and anti-same, he wanted a brand that was really rooted in um, its locality, uh, hotels that were privately owned, that were independently minded and really celebrated individuality. So these values really gave birth to what we call, you know, um, our signature quiet luxury style, which not only sets us apart from other brands, but actually really aligned with the core pillars of sustainability. So sustainability really runs through the small luxury hotels of the world DNA, particularly in two of the core pillars, that's cultural preservation and community. So back in 2019, we knew we needed to take a much more committed journey. Um, so we initially set out to provide support for our hotels, you know, our 520 hotels. We knew they were doing so much, but we knew we needed to provide much more support. So we worked with sustainability experts to um, create toolkits, webinars and say on sustainability best practices and encouraging them to share their responsible tourism stories because we knew that they had lots and in doing this we we knew that we you know we discovered we had an already made collection of actively sustainable luxury hotels so we didn't need to look outside of the um uh, uh collection. My slides are slightly misordered, so please do forgive me. Um, so we didn't, need, we didn't need to look outside of the um, SLH portfolio to create what we call our considerate collection, which is a collection of actively sustainable luxury hotels. Um, so we initially launched with 26 hotels, but today we've got 54 hotels in over 30 different countries, which is fantastic. Some of our newest um, additions you can see here actually include uh, Villa Planinka in Slovenia, Bregan's Castle Hotel, Hotel in Ireland and Wale in Myanmar. And we came across, when we were curating this collection, we came across, um, you know, 
<laughs> we initially looked at partnering and you heard Randy talk earlier about um, various certification bodies and how there really needs to be a good clarification of what certification means. And certainly we, we, you know, we spoke to a lot of um, brands and we didn't feel quite comfortable because some of the same certification companies were the ones that were also uh, guiding and training. And so when we came across, across the um, Global Sustainable Tourism Council, we were really, really happy. We just felt that, you know, uh, they were the right partner for them, for us. So we joined them and then we progressed conversations and they actually helped us curate this collection. Um, so in terms of our um, considerate collection, yeah, these, these slides are misordered. That's completely back to front. So these are our um, 56, 54 hotels within the collection. And um, in terms of our collection, they helped us curate it. And we didn't reinvent the wheel at all. Um, we stuck with their key pillars and you know, their criteria, which covers environment, uh, culture, and community. So the considerate collection, um, I'll just run through it very quickly. In terms of environmental conscious hoteliers, they're very passionate about their positive regenerative impact, green energy, uh, zero waste, biodynamic gardens, rewilding and reforesting. And then in terms of the cultural um, custodians, they are cultural custodians rather, working tire tirelessly to protect and preserve their, um, and promote their heritage. And then also community-minded hotels. Um, so we've got lots of local owners, local people in management, fair wages, etc. So as we continue on this journey, you know, we recognize that there is so much more that we can do. We've only just scratched the surface. And so I'm really excited to be here today to meet with like-minded people people and our peers to, you know, see what more that we can do because, um, you know, we've all got the SDG goals to be aiming for. So thank you very much. And that's, that's me. Thank you, Peggy. So, yeah, we'll go straight to Maya. So Austin, if you don't mind. Working? Okay. So, um, Okay, so it is uh, <clears throat> a great, wow, really exciting. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it is uh, a great uh, honor for me to be here in this uh, event that deals with uh, how businesses can uh, make a positive uh, impact on, on the world. Uh, I'm Maya Sever, and I'm the HR and uh, Impact Director of the Abram Group. Uh, Abram Group is a tourism company um, in which actually chose impact as a touchstone and distinctive factor between itself and other regional uh, tourism company in the area. Um, I want to start by telling you a story of the biblical Abram. Actually, uh, the Bible tells the story of Abram who erected his uh, tent and left it open in uh, four, all four uh, sides of the tent, aiming that everyone who comes from everywhere will be uh, invited, will feel welcome to enter the tent. Um, actually, this tent was uh, our um, inspiration uh, since the establishment of the first hostel in uh, Nazareth in uh, 2005. And since then, wherever we open, we are aiming that everyone will feel invited, comfortable, welcome um, to enter our hostels. So um, our vision, you can see here, our vision is to be an important leading regional tourism group and positively impact the environment around us through our actions while promoting values that are significant to us. Um, we're actually uh, um, operating out of uh, four major location in which each hostel is inspired by uh, the city, uh, the characters of the city which uh, is located in, and a tour company which uh, offers a special and unique tours um, to a major location in Israel. I will tell you about it uh, later. So I will show you, um, now I will show you some pictures of our location, our hostels, and you can, uh, um, you can see the difference, the different design or vibe of, from, of each hostel, but you will see they are all speaking the, the, the vision uh, of Abram. 
So here you can see Jerusalem uh, is more has uh, uh, mod um, modern um, motives uh, combines with uh, um, uh, Eastern uh, Middle Eastern motives. You can see uh, Tel Aviv, which is more a uh, uh, young vibe, a uh, party vibe. Uh, Nazareth is uh, located in the heart of the ancient city of Nazareth, very unique uh, uh, building that was uh, built around 200 years ago, very unique place. Uh, Eilat is a more like a party vibe, very col colorful, and of course they have a pool. And the tour, as I uh, mentioned earlier, that offers uh, unique uh, tours to uh, major locations such as uh, um, uh, Masada, uh, Jerusalem, Jordan, West Bank, and so on. And uh, very excitingly, last year we uh, expanded our uh, operation beyond the borders of Israel, and today we are operating also in Egypt and in the Philippines. What you see here is our uh, six core values. Those uh, values were defined in a very significant uh, process involving all of our employees, top down and bottom up. Uh, each uh, value has a statement and a slogan, as you see. Uh, of course, I won't go over all of the, uh, the, the values, but I do want you will meet them throughout my presentation. But I, I do want to focus now on the, the one of them, which is inspiring change through travel. For us, the meaning of this value is the creation of sustainable uh, tourism. And we're pursuing this uh, goal through uh, implementing some of the uh, uh, SDGs that are the most relevant for us. Uh, I believe you all here knows the, uh, what the SDGs are. And you can see in uh, yellow bold the ones that we uh, decided to uh, focus on and implement. Um, due to the short time, of course, I won't be able to uh, go all over them, but I will give you some examples of how we do that. So the first one is SDG number 10, reduced inequalities. Um, I have, in this sense, we, are, uh, we chose to promote um, um, inter, uh, intercultural tolerance. And uh, we do that in many, in several ways. The first one is uh, by, by tours. We actually um, conduct uh, impact tours that aiming to expose the tourists to the uh, complexity of uh, uh, the, complex, the, the social and political complexity in Israel. Israel. And uh, uh, through this, um, for example, we can uh, uh, expose the tourist, uh, the dual narrative, for example, expose the tourist um, to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict through the lens of each side. In this way, they can learn more about the life in Hebron or in the West Bank, for example, in a much more balanced way. Another way that uh, we promote uh, um, intercultural tolerance is art. Art uh, is a very significant motive in all of our hostels, and uh, we, um, it is very important for us to offer a platform for uh, local young artists that share the same uh, values as we are. In addition, um, it is, uh, we believe that, uh, it is very, that we need to take a stand to express our um, perception about uh, crucial social and political um, uh, issues that arise in uh, Israel. And uh, uh, art is one of the ways that we do that. You can see here posters. Uh, those posters are actually uh, hang on one of the most uh, uh, prominent uh, exterior wall on the uh, in, in Abram Hostel in Tel Aviv uh, and each one of them we replaced it every few months and each one of them represent uh, a different uh, social um, actual social issues that is uh, very um, uh, discussed in Israel um, only a, a small example you can see this on the right this one was referred to um, uh, violence against women during the uh, COVID crisis, and um, we, of course we have some more, um, more um, examples, but we have a short time. 
Next is uh, SDG number 10, Decent Work and Economic Growth. Uh, we have decided to implement this SDG uh, by supporting small businesses. Uh, and also we do that in a variety of ways. What you can see in the pic picture here on the right is a picture that was published in one of the most uh, famous newspaper during the COVID uh, crisis under the title, It Contagious. It means our our message was that when uh, the shutdown of one business affects many other businesses and the, the, the circles represent the small businesses that we used to work with during uh, the COVID uh, time and of course they went through a very um, hard financial difficulties. And the other way around, we believe that our success, we want our success to be contagious as well. We believe that our, uh, uh, we want our success to benefit the other, uh, the all small businesses that we are working with. Uh, we see employees as one of the um, uh, driving force to our um, to our success, and we put a lot of efforts to develop them. Um, to make them uh, feel happy and engaged in our company. And uh, in this sense, uh, last, uh, last year we actually uh, focused on the theme of women empowerment and uh, gender equality. And uh, we, um, we conducted um, a career development program and uh, self-defense and uh, financial management for uh, women's for the women's of uh, Abram. In addition, we had some uh, workshop for um, preventing sexual harassment and creating a protected and safe environment for all of our employees. <laughs> Uh, last is uh, SDG number seven, affordable and uh, clean energy. What you can see here, of course, in this sense, we are uh, pursuing to reduce our um, uh, footprint, carbon footprint. And what you see here is uh, very exciting. Um, uh, just recently, we set up uh, a very innovative uh, green roof in the hostel of Tel Aviv, in the heart of the urbanic uh, city. And uh, we are moving toward uh, um, uh, using a renewal energy in most of our hostels by the end of this year. Um, these were only some of the best practices that uh, we're using. Uh, we had a short time, so um, I hope uh, it shows a little bit of what we're doing in order to promote our uh, va vision and values that are important to us. Uh, I just want to say that uh, this year um, we have we are very exciting about the process of uh, obtaining the GSTC certification. Uh, we chose this uh, standard very carefully, understanding that this is the most uh, comprehensive and accurate standard for us, and. We we really want to be the first uh, business in Israel to achieve this, um, this standard and this certification. I thank you very much for your uh, listening and I invite you all to come to our hostels in, uh, and tours in Israel. Thank you. Maya, um, I can vouch for Tel Aviv and Jerusalem because I've been to both and they're incredible. And just before we go to Aisha, it's really exciting for me to have Maya here representing the hostel sector selfishly. I have a vested interest, but to also showcase the quality of product and to kind of shine a bit more of a light on that sector. So thank you, Maya. And Aisha. Hello. <coughs> Hello. Hi, this is Aisha Zeyne from downtown Istanbul, where I'm also running my hotel, number 11, in the center of it. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, very excited. It's my first speech in a global context. And I'm here to, to tell you about my sustainability journey and my hotel sustainability journey. May I you? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, before the sustainability journey, I want to describe my hotel's world uh, in one minute. Uh, before the sustainability uh, started, we, we are, I was describing it in three words, stylish design, attentive service, and perfect location. Uh, because in, this, in the designing the hotel, we matched the modern fixtures 
with natural elements and having the um, antiquaries of our own neighborhood because the neighborhood is also famous for antiquary shops. So we collected many furnitures and mixed all those with modern, modern versions. Uh, attentive service because I always had a team, a local one, who knows very good the Bayoglu and Istanbul and who are good English speakers, young persons who also travels, which is very important for me. Uh, they understand what's the psychology of a traveling person because they are also travelers. And perfect location we are because we are in the vibrant area of Pera, Bayoglu, as I told before. We have good food, arts, galleries, movie theaters, everything. Uh, we are circumcised by everything, but in a, we are in a silent street, in a side street of it, so it was a perfect location. And then uh, I'll go to tell you about how the sustainability started. And it started with an uh, environmental activism of mine in 2019, when I first go to see the Istanbul Biennial which that year was called Seventh Continent, and I was not aware of it before it, but when I see all that uh, packaging waste floating in the ocean, something uh, happened in my life, and I wanted to turn all the hotel practices into a green versions. Uh, the day after I showed up in the hotel and told, okay, no more single use, nothing. No plastic, but no uh, papers as well. Uh, because I, it was just then that I understand that recycling is not an option, it's not a good option. So no more uh, plastic toiletries, no more straws, no more paper cups, no more small cheeses, no more small honeys or uh, gems like that. Nothing uh, doesn't exist anymore in num number 11 hotel. Because calculating uh, all together uh, in full occupancy, I would have 40 guests. And if everybody use it in one day, it makes almost 40 kilograms of packaging waste. And maybe volume wise is bigger than myself and ended up in the ocean. So it was not a good thing to do. And then uh, in, it was 2019 and I searched, I started to Google uh, what the world is doing about it. So it could not be my own opinion. Uh, and find out the, cri the criteria and the certifications. First, I, uh, I, I seen the green key, and on uh, 2020, we got certified with the green key uh, certification. And doing what, and after the environmental part, we, uh, the things that I'm going to say were the things that we were doing, but uh, acting in the criteria, we just, uh, had to describe it within the correct number of the criteria. So we started, not we started, but we were already doing to shop all our groceries from small grocery shops in the neighborhood. I'm personally going to the local producer markets. Uh, we prepare small downloadable maps for the re local restaurants, local producer markets, and where the guests, the, the tourists can find local goods that my guests scans the QR codes, download it, and go to shopping, whatever they want. And uh, we priori prioritize uh, our employment in Bayolde residence. So. Yes. Um, as a cultural stewardship, uh, this were also some of the some of the things that I'm telling us things doing before the certifications as well. Uh, we have always had a um, uh, small agreements between cultural institutions in our own area, uh, but we started to operate in a more systematic way, doing barters, uh, giving free space for local artist collectives, uh, giving uh, room nights for our, uh, cultural institutes and sometimes we luckily get painted our walls for artists. Uh, we organize sales days for local um, travel, sustainable travel items producers, uh, a free space for a sales days of them. And then we created these small maps of local artists. Every week, every week we post something like that. This artist is opening this exhibition in this gallery. Uh, go to see it and it's only 111 steps from November. It's only 300 steps from November. So it encourages the, to, to go to see the local art and to walk to, to the venue. 
so acting within the, the, the within the certifications, we, uh, we developed our uh, eco uh, eco consciousness things that we are doing. We started to do compost, upcycling furniture, uh, doing rainwater harvest, uh, putting those small aerators to the sinks, which. Uh, saves like 30 cubic meters of water every month. Uh, we do warm composts uh, and we created this green cleaning thing that the, the guests can only ask a refreshment of, the, uh, of their room but not to change the towels and sheets. And then uh, uh, meaning challenges I want to uh, tell you about a little bit how we did that. Uh, in the beginning Uh, I had two ways of doing it. I could have uh, hired consultants and uh, expensive consultancy services, but that wasn't uh, the, the, the good option because the pandemic was already started and we had um, more time, more spare time than the money. Uh, so I, I thought I could have trained my team and myself. So in 2021, I got the GSTC Sustainable uh, Tourism Certification myself and taught all, all, all that I learned to my team. And then, my t and then got the permaculture garden design. And then my team had trainings on composting, waste separation, uh, sourdough bread making and everything and that kind of stuff. And every time one of them had a training paid by the hotel, obviously, uh, taught us what she or he learned in the training. So we had the sessions together. So one of them gets certified and trained and but tells everything to the other ones. And um, another big challenge for me is being in a uh, attached building from for both sides in the historic area. So no green area in the building, no garden, uh, and no green area in the neighborhood as well. So we turned the terrace into an urban gardening space and now we are uh, growing more than 15 different types of greenery, uh, tomatoes, strawberries, and salads. Uh, and we also turned it into a small community garden where we can host our neighbors to exchange seeds. We provide them fertilizers of our vermicompost. And they sometimes they brought us even their kids to, to talk about the worm compost and what is composting. Um, there, the measurement and collecting the data was another challenge for me because when I first see the carbon calculation uh, tools, I said, how can I measure all that things? And But at the end, I ended up with two kitchen scales, two hand scales, and a few Excel tables and a few Excel formulas. And my work, at the end, we are now able to calculate all our recycling waste and divide it per person per night every month and reported via Green Key and the GSTC. And uh, the results, I mean, what all this effort of mine and of my team brought us, I could say that we could we elevated the, the guest experience because right now they are not staying only a small, clean, family-owned, uh, nice city hotel, but they're also staying in a green hotel where they always get tips uh, now all the mirrors and the walls of the hotel are talking to them what, on what to do, what is better to, um, to leave a less footprint in my city. Uh, if they want to, want to learn, they learned how to compost. You can see that lady who stayed almost three weeks with us in an apartment, give it a kitchenette. Uh, she was cooking her own food and she, she was bringing us every day uh, with, the with the recipe that we gave her. Uh, how, what to separate to vermicompost and what to separate to the bokashi compost. Um, another thing is the social media because my guests, as Catherine told, are very young and social media as, is, is a very powerful tool. And a hotel cannot say good morning with a good picture of coffee every morning and that's it. We do that but we also have so much content to share now. Uh, because we are talking about all the environmental days and what we do and all of our neighbors are doing and it's <coughs> it provides that good content to uh, to hire the interest of uh, eco-driven content interested persons and uh, in wrapping up all together uh, if we say if we make a google search of hotels in Bayol area in my area now 
it's uh, 1,319 results. But if we echo, if we put the echo certified filter, it becomes only 11, and this is the general echo certified all echo certifications in the world. But if we go to the green key, we are only 106 in all Turkey, and uh, we are between 202 GSTC certified. And uh, number 11 is the first small hotel out of a chain who got the full certification, which is not a mandatory part. And that was my story. Uh, thank you all for inviting me to share my experience here. <laughs>Thank you, Aisha. I think the, the variety of stories from an aggregator to a chain to an independent just show the diff different ways you tackle everything. And in your case, Aisha, it's really practical. And same for you, Maya, very practical applications. But I think that's really useful. How many in the crowd are accommodation providers or owners? <laughs> just one. OK, well, for everybody else, pretend you are. <laughs> We're going to tap into some questions. So um, I see some questions come in. I have a few. Peggy, I'm going to go straight in with the challenges. Start at the, the bottom or the top, depending on how you define them. So the common challenges that your small accommodations face as you see it and how they tackle them. Yeah, we actually recently did a webinar with um, some of our hotels and we actually posed the question. And the, the top answer that came out was resource. Because obviously being a small hotel, you've got a small team, but there's just so much more, there's so much to do. And, um, and that impacts um, measurement and data. Uh, because you know we're on this journey at the moment where we want to we, we're working with a, a, um, a partner Weaver I'm not sure whether any of you have heard about them but they are a sustainability manage, management tool whereby they help small properties um, and larger properties um, collect uh, report and track their data and one of the challenges that we've got currently at the moment is that we want our hotels to start the measurement journey so that we can report and all the wonderful things that they're doing as well they have the best intentions, but it boils down to resource as to, you know, them getting that together. So we're, we're always trying different ways and Weaver as a partner, they're fantastic. You know, they're helping us with wonderful webinars, etc. But we have to keep front of mind um, in front of the hotels the whole time. And, you know, obviously we know that there's legislation coming down further down the line. So it's important that they start tracking all that data now. Yeah, preparing yeah. the preparing, ground. Yeah, yeah um, It's the top question here, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. um, Maya, in your case, when it comes to management, you have a variety of different ways you measure impact. Do you want to share some of those? Yeah. Um... Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, measurement is actually a crucial uh, thing when you come to, um, when you want to make a change in something. You have to have like a base start and, um, and a continue in order to see continuous progress. You have to have data, you have to have um, targets, and uh, in this case, you have to measure. Um, we are actually, since uh, 2018, uh, we are measuring our impact uh, KPIs, and we um, report every year to the uh, uh, Bridges Fund, which is uh, one of the, it's an impact fund, which is uh, one of our major investors. And um, we actually defined uh, KPIs, specific KPIs uh, that we are measuring. I have to say that for us, one of the main challenge is how you measure the impact itself. I mean, when it comes to uh, social and cultural uh, impact, those uh, KPIs are no, no, most of them are unmeasurable. It's re really um, hard to measure. So what we did back then, we uh, defined KPIs that are mostly about the how, about the activities that we're doing, the actions that we're taking, like, for example, number of tours uh, that took place, number of participants, um, number of uh, uh, small businesses that we are working them, and, and so on and so on. Um, but not the what. We, and we are the most important thing is what the impact that uh, our um, action generated, um, actually. So what we're doing t today, we're trying to find a way uh, to measure that impact. And I can give you one example is for the tour, the tours, for the impact tours, what we are now uh, working on is 
sending a survey to uh, every, um, everyone who participate uh, one of the impact tour and try to measure their perception uh, about the, the issue or the, the social uh, theme of the, um, of the uh, tour to see whether the perception was changed and how much it was changed. So we think in, that, in this sense, we're really measuring the impact itself and not, what, and not how we do it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, in this case, there are a lot of challenges, but uh, we're working on it very hard. And uh, I think it's very, um, very important since uh, we want to see the progress um, throughout the, the years. Yeah, so it's taking the less tangible, getting creative, I guess, and figuring out ways to measure. And Aisha, you obviously got very creative with your kitchen scales. and. <laughs> So uh, I, I use the, the regular HCMI tool, the carbon, Hotel Carbon Footprint Calculation tool. Uh, and what it asks is uh, to, to measure your waste that goes to the recycling, to measure your laundry and your utilities. And uh, I, I, I measure them and put onto the, an Excel table, add, add them on top of it. And then my formulas are uh, calculating the monthly versions and the, then the yearly versions, and we put it on the carbon calculation tool, and it ends up with the carbon footprint of the hotel at the end. And the, I think with the Excel formulas and good hand weights, it's, it's, it can be done. Yeah, it's working, yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to start, and I think well, we chatted about this last night. Once you're on the journey, it gets easier and easier. It's just that kind of fear factor to begin with, I think, that intimidates people. Um, so, you know, as the accommodation providers, I, I want to go back to that notion of managing guest experience because we all know that a guest might say one thing, but they will do and want something completely different. And, you know, you guys have to keep that sustainability application in place, but still provide them with the experience they want. So how do you, you know... Do you want to start with you, Aisha? Where we communicate our sustainability. So we are, uh, as I told you before, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm most of the time I'm there, and my team is talking about to the guests about it, which is person to person contact is, uh, it's something more important than reading something. But you are um, listening something to the to the to the right person that is doing it. Uh, so it's another world. But uh, after, uh, other than that, we are now trying to communicate with the walls and the mirrors and all the small spots that the guests are seeing inside the building about it, which is, which is uh, I'm changing it into a more illustrative wording because the, the, the guests are getting younger and younger and illustrative versions has more effect on young traveler people. Mm -hmm. And Maya? <coughs> yeah. Um. I have to say in this sense that for us, uh, one of the most important thing rather than um, um, expose our values and impact agenda to our guests, it's very important, but um, more important for us is to, to engage our employees in this sense, to our values, um, <clears throat> to our vision. Uh, we know today that um, one for employees are really um, what is most important for them is to be engaged and to feel a, a part of uh, something is which is really meaningful and bigger. And in this sense, we uh, we are um, actually uh, involving employees as much as we can in every uh, organizational uh, process in decision that we're making. It all starts actually with the recruitment process. It is very important for us to uh, recruit employees that share the same DNAs and values as, uh, as we are. In this sense, we are looking for uh, people with, uh, which are very open-minded, which has a positive uh, perception uh, on life, and uh, in, sometimes it is more important for us to, for, to find uh, the people that has those qualities rather than uh, experience and skills that we know that we can provide them with. So, um, so it starts in this stage and uh, it goes on in, uh, uh, as I just uh, mentioned in my presentation, the process of uh, defining our value, which was a very significant uh, process which involved employees top down and bottom up 
right from the start, the first stage when we defined with them our values and to the next stage where we're working together with all of them about implementing those values. And they um, uh, defined uh, how to translate those values into day-to-day -day behaviors that uh, they're actually um, d delivering in the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, life. So okay. yeah. this is really interesting. a few of the uh, yeah. practices. So that's staff. And I guess then, Peggy, for you, it's slightly different because your staff are obviously very invested in this. Mm -hmm. So it's about convincing the hotels mm -hmm. to join the journey. Or are they coming to you looking for more and more? Or how does that play out? Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, back in 2019, we actually knew that we needed to support our hotels a lot more, hence why we started a more committed journey. And um, what we've done, you know, like I said, you know, in creating the Considerate Collection, we've actually been able to put these hotels who are ticking all those sustainability boxes on a pedestal. And it's really inspired the rest of our hotel members. So we're getting lots of inquiries about how can we be part of this collection and what can we do to be better? And so our journey continues, um, hence why we, you know, we work with, listen, we're not the experts, so we work with all the experts, GSTC, um, you know, we've got journalists who will do webinars for us and communicate in sustainability. Just two weeks ago, we did a webinar with Weaver on, on um, masterclass planning in sustainability. So I think they're really inspired and we just need to keep them even more inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not going to let you go now because I see a question here and I had it too. So it's um, around um, where mm -hmm. your properties are located and how the local population or the destination itself, I guess, benefit from the, the Yeah, business. I'd say that's where we really excel, actually. You know, I mentioned earlier that um, the community and culture aspect is where we really excel. I think when it comes to sustainability, ownership really matters. And a lot of our owners, um, they're invested in their locality. You know, they're local owners. So they reinvest back into the locality. That money is not going into some investment fund. And they they will use local resources. Uh, one of our hotels in Bali actually exclusively hires local staff. Um, and they'll use local fishmongers. They'll use local artisans to make um, amenities, et cetera, for their hotels. So I'd say, you know, we really excel in those areas and they certainly do benefit. Great, and we've obviously heard from the ladies about how you impact the local community and, you know, it's all about partnering with local mm -hmm. businesses and, the, I love that it's contagious, positive and negative. So, um, yeah, did you have anything else you wanted to add on the local side? So I know, Aisha, you barter, which I really wanted to hear about. Yeah. <laughs> I love bargaining. It's, uh, uh, it's bartering sometimes if it's in a page of Microphone. <laughs> Sorry. So they can go to shop to the local fruit vendors, grocery shops, and everything. And uh, in front of our building, we have we even have a tailor of that. He is there for the last 20 years. We even ask him to come to the building to take the measurement of, who, of the guests who wants to shorten their pants. So we are totally engaged with our small community in the neighborhood. Do you want to add something? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so in, um, in this sense, we are um, actually supporting small businesses is uh, one of our way to be uh, engaged and uh, connect with the, and a part of our, the communities in which we are uh, located. And of course, uh, to, to promote uh, sustainable uh, um, economic growth. Um, with regard to this, uh, first we are um, working on connecting between our guests and the uh, small businesses in the surrounding area in which we are working, uh, we cooperate with uh, these uh, small businesses and of course uh, encourage our guests to go out and uh, to purchase their uh, grocery and uh, whatever they need in those uh, uh, businesses uh, in the area. 
Um, also, we have a procurement uh, agenda in which we actually uh, prefer to uh, purchase uh, everything from, um, from small businesses. We know, in, in general, small businesses, sometimes it's more expensive and we are willing to pay a little bit more in order to, uh, to cooperate with small businesses, but I have to say that it has to be with, coordinate, with uh, coordinates with our business targets. So um, there is always, and we measure it, we measure the percentage of small businesses that we are working it with out of the total uh, uh, businesses that we are uh, working um, in general. And it, it, in general, we believe that it, it, it's a win-win situation. It goes, uh, I mean, as long as our, as the, the community around us, the small businesses will uh, succeed and flourish and um, um, developed, we will uh, benefit from this as well. So it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. And this, way, this is the way that we think um, it should be promoted. But it does, like, that, that financial impact is important. I see somebody went straight in with the money question. Uh, where did it go? So how has the sustainability journey affected your balance sheet and your financial sustainability? So I suppose to pick up from the point you made around doing it when it makes financial sense as well, I know that, you know, that's a... Everybody's looking at their balance sheet more than ever in the back of the last three years. So how do you balance it, <laughs> for want of a better word? So I think um, uh, mostly our vision express exactly that. I mean, we're saying that uh, we're um, an impact uh, tourism company that wants to be a successful um, and uh, official and business-wise company, but at the same time has a positive effect on the, uh, on the world. So it has to be in balance um, all the way and we measure it and we see exactly how I said earlier about small businesses we won't always go to cooperate with small businesses if it does not goes together with our business targets so it always we always look for the um, for the right balance in order to make sure that we um, that we can make both uh, elements together and Aisha same for you I would say the same uh, is something that of course we invest on certain things but considering the the, the the upcycling and if you if you try to as a small accommodation if you think out of the range and if you think about trying to, to, to find solutions to um, to problems in uh, irregular ways you manage it somehow and uh, in the tourism business, we always there is a, a, one emotional payback of our businesses always, which is uh, which is the reason that we are doing this job. Uh, I think it's it's okay. I'm running the hotel in ten years, and we are there still, so it's yeah. it's balancing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaks for itself. Just before you hand the mic back, I see your name on a question there. So people are very impressed by what you're doing. So what's next for you? Because you've got your your paperwork already, right? So what's next? Uh, I have many dreams and many projects, <laughs> of course. Uh, so uh, renewable energies is a thing that my physical confines so far haven't uh, given me the opportunity to do, uh, but I'm thinking and I'm seeing persons who could give me offers on it and maybe I could manage. And uh, I have many, many projects in my head uh, for the next year because every year I plan something and at the end I do 70% of it but it's okay I'm planning to do to make new bed runners from the old from the pieces of old bed runners with the woman cooperative who is expert on the patchworking many things uh, small projects I'm an action person so I always have projects in my mind mm -hmm. yeah so watch the space so then we'll move from Aisha to Peggy, so Aisha has her own property and she can make curtains and things and Peggy works with castles that are hundreds of years old and I'm just giving that one a plug because it's yes. Irish, Irish and it's new in the collection and yeah. you should all visit because it's incredible mm -hmm. but it's a gigantic old huge building. Mm -hmm. So how do all of your, you know, your, your considerate connection tackle, you know, being in a big old building or maybe it's based on the geography they're in, there's a lot of disparity across the building. So how do they tackle that? 
Yeah, I think it's, you know, we've got so many different types of properties within our, our collection. And um, when it comes to heritage properties like that, uh, the hotels, you know, the, the owners are very, very passionate about restoration. They are really passionate about, um, uh, you know, making sure that they're, that they're keeping it, it as true to its origins as possible. And that's, I think, why we're really, really passionate about um, measurement, because it's hard for them to see initially how, what kind of cost um, savings they're making. Um, for the hotels that already do measure, we know that they that there's a definite financial benefit, and not just a financial benefit, but across the board, there is benefits um, in terms of staff retention, there's benefits in terms of uh, efficiencies, resources, etc. So that's why you know we want to kind of educate our hotel members that look, the initial outlay might be a fair bit, but over time, you will definitely make make a return on on you know whatever it is that you're doing, mm -hmm. and to be able to show them that which goes back to the measurement. Yeah, and definitely. I just see another one in. So, how do you communicate about sustainability in a way that doesn't feel like it will undermine the luxury of the experience, which is quite unique to your proposition? Yeah. So, I guess you know, the definition of luxury has really changed over the years. You know, if you think luxury is really driven by status. And over the years, um, or many, many years ago, that status was very much about material objects, you know, what people own. And there's been a real cultural shift as to what luxury actually means. And right now, it, I, I feel there's a, a shift towards, you know, luxury or status being about, you know, who I am rather than what I own. And so when we have, um, uh, hotels go to our pro sorry um, uh, guests go to our properties they get so excited about the unique experiences being able to be immerse themselves in local culture you know being able to have dinners with locals or you know locally sourced um, uh, uh, meal made for them etc and I think that um, for us what we try to do is always try to shine a spotlight on it because it is very luxurious uh, we have a wonderful blog on our on our website, which really details some of these incredible experiences. And like I said, because the definition of luxury has slowly shifted, people are looking for different things. They really are. Yeah, so it's more yeah. about authenticity now yeah, than what totally. the, the older meaning. Mm -hmm. I know we're approaching time. I see another one in there. Yeah, so obviously, Aisha, you mm -hmm. have certification. Maya, you're going for it. So what do you think are the drivers to a small accommodation to start the process? So when you sit down and you look at your priorities, and maybe I should go to you first, when you decided, what, what prompted you to take that step? I decided in 2019, September, then applied in December for the green key, and we got it in April. Uh, but uh, the certification is not something that you get it and it ends, you have, you, you, uh, you, you show up a yearly plan for the next year and in the uh, audition in the audit of the next year they come to see if you did what you presented at the beginning of the year so it's a journey it's not something that you get sacred but did you did you kind of wait until you were at a certain point before you decided you were like I'm thinking of our framework and some are at the very beginning of their journey and we don't want to intimidate the daylights out of them so they don't start so at what point did you feel did you did you look at the criteria and go oh, yeah I actually think I'm doing quite a lot of that now or what's what's the thought process yeah uh, when I first see the criteria the measurement part was was a big thing for me because that was some that we were not measuring of course uh, but then uh, thinking, we were doing things to address to the each specific numbered criteria and uh, work on the ones that we are not doing and learn how to do it and then do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking notes because I know what's going to happen when we surface pages of criteria. Um, and Maya, for you? Um, yeah, actually, we... Um, we decided to go ahead with uh, this uh, certification a um, few years, right before the COVID started. And uh, we were, everything was, um, uh, we made all the preparation and then COVID arrived and everything stops. 
and uh, now we are um, uh, going ahead with this uh, plan uh, again. So uh, first of all, yeah, we went through all of uh, the, um, the criteria and I have to say that uh, for us, um, we, we, we recognize that with regard to cultural and uh, social criteria, we are, we are in, a, in a good uh, place. Uh, we have more things to do um, environment, environmental wise. And uh, we started, we have uh, our Ophir is sitting right here. She is our sustainability leader and uh, she's uh, working very hard. And um, we also just recently, we asked for a, a pre-auditing, which was very, very efficient. Um, I really recommend every, anyone who wants to start this process uh, to do this pre-auditing because it really gave us a good base to where, where we're standing and where uh, the gaps are. So now we are working on the gaps and we really hope that very, very soon. And, and then another thing I want to say is that we, um, um, we involve all, all uh, managers to this process because it cannot be alone. I mean, me or Ophir cannot do it by ourselves. Uh, all managers must be um, engaged to the process and, uh, um, and believe in it. And uh, now we're working on those gaps, hoping that in the very um, near future, we'll have the audit uh, itself. I mean, it's, uh, I think Randy used the term this morning, it's continuous improvement. So it doesn't matter where you're at, there's always more that you can do and more you can tap into. Right. I, no one's waving their arms, so we might take one more question from this, and then I have one closing question. So how strong was the opposition of the hotel beneficials in the chosen sustainable way? I, I guess it means, I don't know, who, did it, who put that question in? Do you want to share it? I don't... No? Okay, we'll go to another one then. Um, how long? I think we've kind of covered all of them, to be honest. So I'll tell you what we'll do. I am going to go to my closing question. Um, Maya, you had a slide and you picked the same point, actually, so it's obviously one that resonates. You said Abraham see tourism as a force that can change reality and be beneficial for people, community, and the world as a whole. That's a tall order. So for each of you, in two sentences uh, to add to the challenge. What's the one thing you would like to achieve in the next 12 months to tap into that notion of essentially making the world a better place? And I'll go to you first, Peggy. Oh, gosh. Okay, so... I love a I think... question. <laughs> oh, gosh, thank you for that. Um, well, I'm going to hop back to measurement, actually, because I think it's going to be a game changer for us. Um, so over the next 12 months, I'd love to get not just our considerate collection hotels, but also the rest of the portfolio on a measurement journey, because that way, as a brand, we can report on all the great works that, that you know, we're, do we're doing. At the moment, we get asked so many questions from journalists. They want to see uh, a sustainability report, annual report, and we need the hotels to feed into that. So that's my um, objective, my aim for the next Sounds 12 months, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and Maya? Um, I think I said uh, uh, with regards to this, we believe that travelers are, um, are people that during their trips, they are really open-minded and they are curious and want to explore new uh, societies and cultures. And um, we believe that if we uh, make sustainable tourism accessible to them, um, we can really make them adopt those principles and take it with them to uh, wherever they go. And this, this impact is like, will have, um, um, <coughs> will, will continue to wherever they go. And this is what we want uh, our impact to be um, in general. So, so paying it forward. Yeah. This is, yeah, this yeah. is definitely our target. And Aisha? I can't wait. Could be anything. <laughs> uh, so I I totally agree with Maya. The if if more travelers will be more aware of the of sustainability issues and uh, then we as the uh, hotel businesses and the small hotels or big hotels we we will improve ourselves to give a more sustainable service to them. And uh, now 
uh, as me being very small uh, in some kinds, I, I'm the one who shows, shows them the way, but I would love to see more people showing me, me the, the different ways that they see in the other parts of the world. So uh, me learning from them how to be more sustainable. Yeah, I guess it's a mutual education and it's about, it's about embedding it in people's psyche so that it becomes the norm and it's not something we have to have panels about because people are doing it anyway. Um, we'll still do panels, I'm sure we'll find something to talk about, but I think, yeah, normalizing it and making it not such an exception is probably the, the goal. Um, okay, that's it. Thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you found that useful. Thank you, panelists. Thank you. Um, we're all around, so please come bug us with questions or meet us for a cocktail later, whatever, whatever you fancy. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.